poll shows that Democrat Kirsten Cinema is up by six points. But according to the Real Clear Politics average of polls, the race remains a toss-up. Yesterday, we had Representative Cinema in our studio this morning. Uh, we are thankfully joined by Representative McSally. Thank you very much. We know you have a busy schedule. We thank you for taking the time this morning. Oh, it's great to be back. All right. I want to get right to it since uh, we don't have much time. President Donald Trump told Axios on yeah. HBO that in an executive order, he plans to end birthright citizenship. It's a very controversial yeah. move. A lot of people have fired back saying he doesn't have that power your thoughts on that well I, I appreciate he was elected in, in in very strong part you know to secure the border and to crack down on our legal immigration system and I appreciate him raising awareness on the abuses that are happening I mean there's an entire industry of individuals especially from China that come over they call it birth tourism uh, to lie on their applications for a tourist visa and then come over here uh, and have their child so it can be a US citizen and so I think most American people would agree that we need to secure the border and enforce and strengthen our immigration laws uh, so that these abuses can stop happening and that's the focus that I'll have in the Senate. Uh, would you push back against it because uh, many law experts say that would be a violation of the 14th Amendment? Yeah I mean I'm not a constitutional lawyer I think again the the intent is and what I'll focus on in the Senate is to make sure that we're actually securing the border uh, that we strengthen our immigration laws that we enforce them and we close the loopholes that are being taken advantage of uh, that are continuing to have you see with the caravan continuing to have uh, more uh, contraband and more individuals coming over illegally we have a very generous legal immigration system. I do think it needs to be modernized so it's more in line with what our economic needs are. Uh, but it's a million people a year getting green cards. And so I think people w agree that people should come here legally and we've got to keep you know, bad individuals out and the opioids and the, the drugs that are, are hurting people in our communities every single day. I know immigration is one of your platforms. Yes. Uh, talk about the caravan because there's yeah. a caravan of South Americans headed yeah. <laughs> north toward the United States border. How would you address that? Well, this caravan is highlighting for the country uh, the realities of what's happening every single day, actually, at our border in uh, many caravans, where individuals are taking advantage of the fact that we don't have strong border security in many places, so they can cross illegally and disappear. But these are asylum seekers. No, no, no. Well, some, some of them are, for, perhaps. I mean, or there will be. I, I mean, if, the way. if you're trying to sneak Look, in, you're not coming in a large caravan. Okay. Well, many of them are coming every day, hundreds a day, either illegally over the border or through the ports of entry. They've been trained to just say two words. I have a credible fear and then they're put into the asylum system and this has gone up the backlog's gone up uh, 1700 percent in the last years of individuals that are just saying these two words now there's some legitimate asylum cases out there and many of them are getting lost into the the sea of these other ones that are being are really taking advantage of our laws in these loopholes that need to be closed so again we're a generous country uh, but I think most Americans and most Arizonans believe you can't just show up and demand entry and let go into the interior of the United States never to show up for a court date, which is what the vast majority do. Every single day in the Yuma sector right now, hundreds of people are being released, uh, either in Yuma or brought to Tucson uh, or Phoenix because they're taking advantage of these loopholes. This is just no way for us to be securing our border and running our immigration system. So I think the vast majority of people, uh, aside from the extreme activists, think, hey, we've got to strengthen our laws, we've got to enforce our law, we've got to secure our border, and we've got to modernize our legal immigration system. And that's what I've been leading on since I've been in the House, and I'll continue to when I'm in the Senate. Uh, let's get to health care because this seems to be a hot topic here in the race. Uh, you say that you now support those with pre-existing conditions. Uh, but you have. voted to repeal and replace Obamacare on several different measures yeah. that came before you. So clear that up for us. Absolutely. Look, we're trying to move away from the failures of Obamacare. The intentions certainly were good. There were many people, uh, people close to probably all of us, who had pre-existing conditions and couldn't get access to health insurance before Obamacare. So the intentions were good, uh, but it's failed. On the individual health insurance market, this is where small business owners, entrepreneurs, small business employees, early retirees, they cannot get access to health insurance right now with pre-existing conditions because there's only one choice in 14 of 15 counties in Arizona. The prices have gone up over 300 percent and so right now people are not being protected. So instead of a one-size-fits-all federal top-down approach, a trillion dollars in taxes and 700 billion robbed from Medicare to address this, which was the Obamacare model, we're trying to move towards something that provides more options, more choices, brings down the cost, allows more flexibility at the state level. But the bill I voted on specifically says insurance companies 
days cannot deny people with pre-existing conditions. I'm passionate about this. This is fear tactics coming from the left because there's not much else for them to run on. Just know I've spent my whole life protecting people and defending people. I'm gonna keep doing that, especially when it comes to these issues, but we need more options for people so they can afford their health insurance and their health care. Uh, let me ask you one more question about health care. Uh, would you uh, support caps uh, that these insurance companies place? No, uh, absolutely not. And our bill said there will be no caps. Again, what I do support is more options and more innovation and more state flexibility to figure out how to have a robust individual health insurance market. That's what it really comes down to. 60% or so of people get their, get their insurance from their employer. We have Medicare, Medicaid. It's about 7% of people in this individual market that's collapsed uh, that Obamacare is not working for. And I meet people every single day that are stuck in this area that they don't have good health insurance or they can't afford health insurance. So we got to provide more st stability to this market, more choices. Let's let small businesses pull together. Maybe you're a restaurant owner and you can't compete to get good health insurance for your employees. Employees, but you can pull together with other restaurant owners to have a more, you know, a larger pool of people so it's more stable and it brings down the cost. We also got to work to bring down the cost of health care. We're working with this administration and the cost of prescription drugs. Do you know that over 30% of prescription drugs are left at the counter? Uh, people walk away because they can't afford their copay. Uh, this has got to change. And we've put some legislation on his desk so individuals who have terminal diseases, right, the right to try legislation, have options for them to be able to fight for their own lives to try things that are approved in the early stages by the FDA. Uh, these are really important issues for families across Arizona, and I just want them to know my heart. Please don't believe the fear tactics and the ads. We're trying to make it work in a better model that provides you more care and more options at a lower cost. You talk about those attack ads. I know a lot of people are tired of seeing them. Did this race have to turn that ugly? Well, I'll just say on our part, it's, I think it was really important for people to see who I am and what I've done with my life, and we've really tried to get out there with that message. I spent 26 years in the military. I put my life on the line for our freedoms and our way of life, and I broke barriers for women and girls, being the first woman to fly in combat and command a fighter squadron in combat. This is our 12th senator we're electing as a state, and I think people want to make sure they know who we are, we know what we've done with our lives, what we've led on, and specifically on the national security issues. I mean, my opponent has been very anti military in the past, advocated to shut down Luke Air Force Base, you know, protesting our troops in a pink tutu. I mean, you've seen all the, the dynamics. These are real. These are the things she put her passion into. I hope people will really do their research and make a good choice because in the Senate especially, we need leaders that are going to lead on national security and military issues. We've been blessed to have a long history of leaders on these issues in Arizona, and this is an important part of the choice they have to make in the next six days, and I'd be honored to have their vote. Yeah, six days indeed. We we thank you very much for taking the time. We wish you the best of luck.